I want to thank you guys so much for bringing chocolate today. <laughs> how, how apropos is this? I like, am we happen to have the, this amazing sponsor, 7th Heaven, who I love. And I started using them in all of my desserts on Friday night because oh, wow. you can have, because they're non-dairy. You melt it? You can melt it. You can chop it. Wow. My daughter makes chocolate chip cookies with them. And That'd be they're amazing. amazing. They're really amazing. They're so versatile and they are so, 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 so good. And they're they parv. dairy. And they're so parv. They're made with oat milk. Thank you. Yeah. They're not dairy. Yeah. And I happen to love anything dairy. And so I, I love this chocolate. I also will have it like with a tea and a piece of that. It's like, it's, so, it's heaven. It hits the spot. <laughs> Seventh That's heaven. Right. Perfect. Right. So name. we want to th thank Seventh Heaven for their sponsorship. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, there's all different kinds. There's all different flavors. White yeah. chocolate with. Um, chocolate chunks and or cookies inside, right? Cookies and, and cream is one is a favorite, and I think so. And peanut butter, if you like peanut butter, I'm gonna use I love it that for one. Rosh Hashanah baking. Yeah, I'm a baker, so you I went to baker? I went to culinary school. Yeah, no way. So what's your specialty in ba which? What uh, I do cake decorating. I did. I used to have a, a cake business, so I did like professional cake decorating. Wow, kosher cakes. Yeah, she loves to cook too. <laughs> I don't, you don't hear that often, that people who love to bake also love to oh, cook. Right, it's like one. Oh, you're her. kidding. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, See, that's I just, what I'm saying. I just, I will eventually cook a lot, but right now in my life, I'm not, and <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, we, we have a dream that we're going to live next door to each other, and I will do we the will. cooking, and she will do the baking. Mm -hmm. That's a good arrangement. And then yeah. we're going to be in that's a good, a good place. Exactly. Well, we are very excited to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you. Joyce Azria and Rachie Schnee. And um, it's very special to have two very close friends here as well. So we want to, you know, we're excited to, and Ida and I are very close friends. So excited. I know it's like very cute. Yes. Energy of like, <laughs> we came in, we ate chocolate, we're talking. It's, it's, it's going to be good day. Um, and I must say, I was very inspired to meet both of you. You're both multi-role women. And um, actually, the way I wanted to go about you sharing about yourselves with us is when I meet people as a matchmaker, I actually ask them to look at themselves from the outside in instead of from the inside out, um, mm. from, from an objective perspective. And I ask them, how would you say that your friend would describe you? Ah. So I thought I would ask you guys to each share about each other. That's so smart. Introduce really, each other. Really, smart. I love that. Okay, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is Joyce Azra. I do. I'm used to this because I introduce her all the time oh, when we're speaking. <laughs> um, but she is. I mean, oh my gosh, I can't even begin to begin. I can't even begin to begin. Oh, that makes sense. Um, she be, she grew up. She's actually born in Paris. She moved to LA with her family. Uh, she is the daughter of the late BCBG Max Azria, who built an amazing empire from the ground up, from nothing. It's really an incredible story. And he was. He's a Tunisian fun he was beautiful like inside out just like this all energy like joie de vivre like now I speak French because I'm friends with her you know joie de vivre, joie de vivre. <laughs> and he was just a, like larger than life man considering he wasn't the tallest he like had a very extreme presence and I feel like that transcended into his daughter his oldest daughter Joyce and um, she's actually one of six and she grew up and was like thrown into this incredible industry she she like lived and breathed it her whole life. So not only that, but she just was so in tune with, she is so in tune with any type of business idea. And, you know, her father taught her that like, there's nothing that's too big or too unattainable. So she's always dreaming bigger, looking to do bigger, looking to do greater. And it's such an amazing feeling to, to talk to her when it comes to even mentorship, because she's like, nothing is, is impossible, really. So she definitely wow. got that from wow. her incredible father. Oh, and that it's, makes me all sensitive. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Talking and, to my dad. And um, yeah, no, but it's true. And she ended up um, leaving LA and moving to Florida during COVID. She had a very um, traumatic experience. She was one of the first to deliver with COVID in LA, pregnant. Uh, sorry, deliver, obviously pregnant. She was the first to deliver a baby. And in March, 2020, her son, who's actually named after her father, Mordechai, and it was also like not even a year after he passed away. So it was very special. And uh, she went through a very, very difficult three weeks of being isolated without her baby, having just delivered. And um, it was, she, she's going to talk more about that and how she faced her fears and conquered them. But she moved to Florida and she's here with her family and her seven children and her amazing husband. And 
She has done everything from fashion to wellness to CBD to shoes, Amazon. <laughs> She's an author. She wrote a kid's book. Uh, she started now doing a mastermind class, which we'll talk about, that launched yesterday. So everyone can get a little piece of her um, and register now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. All right. You're going to have to tell yeah, us we'll about the mastermind. Yeah. And um, we actually started a brand together. Um, we're working on a lot of things, thank God. And it's really been incredible. It's been like... We're all wearing the brand. We, we the are. Healer <laughs> Loving the healing collection. The healing She she whipped me up into shape and was like, we're making watches. Her, the Mazel watch was her idea and everything. She's just, but aside from all of her business brilliance, she is the most nurturing, welcoming, beautiful Neshama ever. Yes. Um, she hosts so many people every Shabbos. Um, she cooks, like whips up an entire Tunisian, Sephardi, Kugel, Chulin, Ashkenaz dinner in three minutes. And she... I would love does to Does it with a that. smile and she loves to put music on and dance with her kids in her kitchen and she's just like full of life and beauty and and just anyone who meets her or even gets to listen to her when they hear her speak at any speaking engagement like wants to be her best friend and she's like how do I how do I get it? how do I even get close to her how do I talk to her so I'm like, stay back. <laughs> She's my best friend. <laughs> I have to actually like be her bodyguard. I'm like, you know, put, punching them away. Um, but it's really so beautiful to see that and to see how you guys know this as being so close and best friends. And of course, we both have sisters that we love so much and they're incredible people. But when you have this um, friendship that's so pure and really just wanting the best for each other, you all you want is for other people to also enjoy, see their beauty and to see their essence. And I feel like it's so, so visible with, with Joyce. And she doesn't have to convince anyone of anything. You're making me cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, this, like, this, this is the podcast. <laughs> so yes, I love you. No, yeah, so, I love you um, too. It's just been an incredible, I mean, it's so Mina Shemaim, every the way that we became such good friends and um, how our life just collided into each other and like we're only doing good things and like building beautiful things to help other people and mm -hmm. and to inspire other people and it's actually funny because our friendship was built on learning we started that's learning right. together that's the first thing wow and bitachon uh, um, yeah, um, and that i think that is usually i think it's the most beautiful thing for a foundation for any relationship wow it is and because of that we like just completely catapulted into something so much greater than ourselves because a lot of crazy stuff has happened since we became such good friends and uh yeah i just that's joyce can i please give back to that amazing <laughs> introduction <laughs> trying to introduce you in oh and she speaks spanish french and English fluently. Okay. It's amazing. Did yeah. you want to tell them that I, <laughs> my other talent? <laughs> and yeah. She'll be adding all sorts of things along the way. <laughs> I will let you know that she's a Korean pop star, but we can talk about <laughs> that afterward. But, um, so. I don't have the best singing voice. Okay. For, for me, um, for me, like when I think about Rachie, um, she is such a big force in my life. And there was like life before Rachie. And then there's life since I've met Rachie. Um, I think one of the foundational pieces in our friendship, and it doesn't like come out and it's not something that we talk about every day, um, is how much she's connected to who we are as Jewish women. And, um, I grew up in a home where my mom was the daughter of Holocaust survivors and it was a thing that nobody talks about. And we just, it's, we keep it there and it's in a box. When I met Rachie, um, I was actually doing a business deal in New York. And this lady across the table says to me, you remind me so much of Rachie Schnee. Do you know who Rachie Schnee is? And I said, you know, no. And I was like, we were in the middle of conducting something. And <laughs> like, no, you have to meet her. And she just, the way she was speaking about her, there was something more. Um, and she basically set us up to have a lunch together. I told my husband, I said, come, it's gonna be quick. I'm probably, she probably just has like a few business questions. I'm, I don't even know. And I walked into what I didn't know would change the rest of my life really in, in such a meaningful way. Um, she sat down and started to talk to us about the work she does for Yad Vashem and the collection of Rei Chishne jewels that she does and everything was a Magen David and Am Yisrael Chai and, and um, everything she does has no start and it has no separation from her essence. And she's such a proud granddaughter of Holocaust survivors. 
and the way that she speaks about her grandfather, I mean, I feel like I've been in a room with him. It's so, um, it's so tangible and so big. Um, so um, when I met Rachie, I left that lunch and I was in tears and I looked at my husband and I said, I think I, I met my sister today. Like it was something so big. Um, I meet a lot of people and I would say that the one thing that attracts me the most to people is value driven people. And Rachie has the most amazing value system. She's a pillar. She has great balance. She can assess a situation in a very kosher way. She's very clean and pure of thought. And I love being with her because I, I literally feel like I'm staring into a mirror and she makes me a better person from just the level that she holds herself. Um, I like, I look at her parents and I'm, and I'm like, you should be so proud of every moment, every decision, because I mean, I know from having children that we don't, we, we, we don't make them for ourselves, but when they turn into these independent voices and they really go out there and make the world better, we're proud of the work that we were a part of. Um, I look at Rachie's parents and I, 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 she's simple, she's kind, she's loving, she's energetic, she's constantly giving. In fact, it's like, it's, it's hard to match her level of giving. I'm like in this friendship, <laughs> it's like, it's constant. It's, you know, like, you know, I'll walk into my house and there's an espresso machine and I didn't have an espresso machine when I left <laughs> in the office in the morning. Well, I mean, well. it's, it's, it's giving, it's giving time. It's giving love. It's giving energy. She builds people up. Um, and I can say that it's truly because she's so foundationally strong. Like there's, there's such a balance about her. Um, and you know, it's, it's hard to do all of that in your essence without maybe even being, you know, letting that strength carry over into everything. And she doesn't, she knows how to like manage that balance. And she has such a softness about certain situations and such an empathy to people. You could tell her your story and she'll be, like, ah, you know, like <laughs> this thing happened to this person. And, you know, um, and, and part of our connection is also Sarit, who is a very, very good friend of Rachie, but yes, and, we, and we interviewed Sarit because yes. of you yes. guys. Yes. Everybody who knows Rachie, everybody else, everybody who connects to her, it's like a level of awareness. You must hit a level of awareness, I think, to be around her um, because she creates just an amazing energy everywhere she goes. And, you know, people say she's a connector and, and you know, all of these things, but I think that it's just her essence is so good and so intelligent and hysterical, <laughs> hysterical. And like, I, 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 I love, I love like, I, I want my day to be one un un uninterrupted phone call with Rachie where <laughs> she's like I'm dying of laughter. I'm like, um, she always says like, that's the best compliment. And it's I was just gonna so say that. true. It's really true. I, I love when people say that I'm funny because I'm like, okay, you really know me because that's what I like pride myself. I love laughing and I love making people laugh. So, and she's very... authentic, you know, to like who she is. There's no bending, and and I love that. Like I love seeing her at a dinner, maybe even when she disagrees with somebody, and you can see her starting to you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> climb out of herself, and she's like, well, how do I put this in a kind way? <laughs> And she nails it every time. Um, she holds people accountable to themselves because she's so accountable to everything and everyone. Thank and, you. And, um, wow, wow. It's really a growing experience. Having her in, in your life is a growing experience. I'm, I'm very lucky. I actually so, picked up on all that when I met Rachel. Really? Yeah. You have yes. really good, well, you yeah. have great energy. You have good <laughs> you friend have amazing energy. energy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And that is really special how you two describe each other. Like you know each other really well and oh, you, yeah. you appreciate the gift in each other. And I think what's so incredible is that you, the way you just each described each other and your friendship, it was the, almost like the way people describe what life was like back when they were in high school or when they had these like close college friends or even when they were younger and, and, the, and life was so simple and beautiful. Like you really saw the beauty in life. And sometimes with adulthood, we start to, you know, just get into the nitty gritty of work, of mm -hmm. life, of all these things. And we forget about how important relationships and friendships are. And you are both very busy and you have so much going on, you're dynamic women, and you talk about each other like this is, she's as, as though, and you are in a way everything to each other, but it's so real and it's so authentic. And I think a lot of us miss that. I think a lot of us miss that in our quest to find success yeah. in whatever way we want to. I mean, it got to a point where we're like, okay,
uh, we need to talk all day, so we need to work together. So we need to start a business. <laughs> okay, so I was going to ask you how you like what? what right. How but do you e, do but that? But I love what you just said, and I think it's so important because in hindsight, everything always looks so amazing and beautiful. When you look back at your friendship from high school, you're like, oh, it was such a great. And obviously, so everything simple. in hindsight so true. is always better than what it actually was. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I feel like what we strive for every day is also silliness and I think like as an adult you forget about being silly and like just like laughing yeah, we need that and we laughing need... at yourself yeah. we both laugh at ourselves we both make fun all of day. each other all day, all day and like we don't get if we're just like ah you know I think like if you're if you're really searching for that type of friendship it's it's so important to just be light sometimes because they're so heavy everything's heavy and you know and just to be light and silly and laugh and like we can look at each other and start hysterically laughing because whatever you know it's just it's nice to have someone to go to for that every day. So you talk all the time. You guys no, yeah. keep in touch. Yeah, all the time. So that's nice that you have that shared mission, like that work that you do together. Mm. It's it's really yeah. beautiful. My yeah. my father taught me. My dad used to host the most beautiful um, Shabbos meal, and you know sometimes we would have like 120 people there, and I'd be like, Dad, like. I just want to be just us. Like, why do we always have to host so many people? Why a hundred? Why are there these weird people walking into the house? You know, and as a young person, you're looking at everybody and judging and this and that. And he would say, um, when you'll know them, you'll love them. And like, and, and he's like, he's great. You know, you just have to understand. And, and, and I really, as an adult, I really learned to, to really try and get to know people and, and to love them before anything else. Like, you know, we don't know people's journeys. And I, I heard Sarit say something amazing yesterday about um, like how Hashem sees our heart and he sees us all the way from when we were born, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I think that if you come at somebody with a ton of love and wanting to know and wanting to know them. Genuinely wanting yeah, to know. Yeah, genuinely wanting to know them, you, you get a lot further. And, 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 and taking the judgment glasses off, like yeah. really trying to not judge. And that's yeah. a very hard thing to do yeah. when you're running a business also, oh, yeah. because you have to be able to filter out some people who might not, you know, uh, mesh well, or it's like you, you have to be, to be on a higher frequency to be able to read people's energy. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you um, sometimes have to say no and... Yep. And, and it's so we, she's and, really and how good do at that. you do it? How? She's really good at that. Because I'm working on this, like keeping no's, no's, and yeses, strength, yeses. And that's not a weakness of hers, but be, we always it's say a it's a man, sensitivity. Yeah. And we always say that that we never, I have my own company, Rachi Schnee, the fine jewelry company. She's so that's, done, that's not your company? No, no. it's separate. And we no. have Healer's Collection together with Sarit, but, um, and we're working on a bunch of other things. But she, we always both separately said like, we never want partners. We just, yeah. want, you know, we I, were, I didn't we were kind of like raised to be like, partner. no, you don't have a partner. It's so calm, whatever. Um, and then when you find the person that you really feel like I don't want to do it without them. And then you compliment each other in that way. It's so Absolutely. nice to have that. Like we realize that we're like, it's so nice to go into a meeting and be like, and then discuss it after and say, no, something's off. You know, like it doesn't work. Do you know when we interviewed Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, he was talking about people, when you find someone that you're able to work with together, like he was saying the Beatles, when, when mm. they sang, they were a hit and really successful. Then when they, when they all tried to go off on their mm. own, oh. they yep. weren't as successful. And he was talking about the Undoing Project. Who were those two authors? There's two, oh, yeah. There were two um, authors uh, that wrote Daniel a book. Daniel Kahneman. Yeah, and two Amos economists. Um, Daniel Kahneman and, and Amos Tversky. Amos Tversky. Yeah. People who can find somebody else if, you, if you're gifted the gift mm -hmm. and are open to ha Hashem's opportunity really that he's giving you. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a big blessing, yeah. We were talking about it yesterday and when you really truly authentically want, think of the other before yourself, as if it was like in any relationship, friendship, marriage, whatever it is, children, parent, it, it, that's when you know that there's like, no competition. There's no like, oh, but but like she did that much work. So I have to do that. Like, you know, we're totally like, okay, one person has to do X amount of work this week because the other one has to take care of her kids or this, I have to travel. Like we don't even think about what's important what. to yeah. her is important to me. And if she has something that, she, that I can help with, then it's my priority. We almost fight over like, like, let me help you. Yeah. Let me do it for you. Let me, you know. <laughs> but that, how do you do it practically? Like in a, in a, in, in the world where there's so many, you're pulled in many directions. Oh. How do you practically manage Let's say a day-to-day -day schedule. You know, you have kids in school now. You mm -hmm. have your husband. You host a lot the way, she, the way Rachie described you. Multiple business endeavors going on. So how do you practically do it? 
Mm. Or any tips for us? Yeah. Also, <laughs> we bought a board. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was going to be like, we, I ordered a huge she was board like, on Amazon she yesterday. She was looking at me last week like, and she's you like, need you have board. a lot of things going on. <laughs> she was stressed. A right? whiteboard? Like, we no. Both, we're both very visual people yeah. and we both have this like half creative, half business minds, which is also, that's why we click so well because sometimes you meet, even like hiring people, I hire someone and they're so good at doing all the administrative work. But then when it comes to the creative, it's like, I have to be on top of it. And it's like, oh, it's so hard. But we're so good at like trusting each other that whatever we decide works. Yeah, we, we feel the same yeah, way. It's, yeah, and it's amazing to feel that because otherwise them. you feel so like you're like micromanaging and I don't want to do that. Right. And, and so um, it's, it's a trust. You trust each trust. other. Cause and like, and but I think both of us have the character to simplify things rather than yeah. to complicate things. And I see that when I'm mentoring people and this is, you know, why why this business class came about. Um, is What's I, a business class? I, yeah, so, Tell us so, about this, the business yeah, class. Yeah, so basically, um, I'm involved in about seven things right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, rate to yourself, and then I have seven kids. And um, seven the, the number. The, seven <laughs> the number. Um, and there's always seven like a heaven. lot. <laughs> yeah, seventh heaven. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty there's, amazing. There's always um, there's always so much flying. Wait, I lost my train of thought oh, where I was. Okay. So you're giving the, you're, you're the starting new project a class, you're doing. You're launching yes. Class. So you know, it's like. I'll meet somebody in a meeting or I'll go somewhere and I'll, and all of a sudden, you know, they'll look to me and say, I believe that you are my sign and Hashem sent you in my, and it always opens like that. And I'm like, oi, <laughs> you know, cause I, cause I want to be there and I right. want to simplify things for people. And I think sometimes we are in the weak mode and we're not in the Shabbos mode. And I think that her and I both conduct ourselves like it's always Shabbos. We are above a lot of things and we keep it simple. If it gets too complicated, we typically... So can you give an example? When, when would it get too complicated? Sure, sure. That you need to simplify, that, and then how do you simplify it? Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a very good question. I think a, a good example would be like the Healer's Collection yes, launch. Yes, launching, I was just... <laughs> launching me. I was literally thinking, I'm like <laughs> launching before perfection. You don't need perfection before you begin anything. It's like, I think that that's, that's what is that's the enemy holding of a so beginning. many people back from jumping in. Like Nachshon, like you got to just jump in. Like I how you love said, Nachshon. How you said that you brought up the podcast and like so many people can talk, talk, talk and they get so nervous and scared and their anxiety takes over and they're like, but how am I going to do it? Are people going to like it? Are people going to sign up? Are people going to buy it? Are, and it's just like those questions in your head that Sounds drive like the you week. crazy. I literally just Shabbos, on the way like here, something popped up on my Instagram and I was like, I should talk about this in the podcast because it's such a great line, but it says that, um, anxiety within ourselves is just conspiracy theories about, about our, ourselves. ourselves. Like yeah, it's just, good. it is like, it's like, you're just making up all this stuff in your head that yeah. isn't going to happen. That doesn't, that doesn't even exist. It doesn't have power. Like yeah. don't give it power. So, or you don't know, you don't yeah. even know if it's true. Exactly. Yeah. And I've done, we both come from backgrounds of so many different things. Like I started as I dropped out of OT school and then I became a professional baker. Then I was a teacher and then I started at home. I, I started love that so about many you. different businesses and when I look back, I'm like, whoa, I had guts. Like, <laughs> like I like never was scared and I never was like scared what people thought because I just don't care. And then when we started this healers collection business, which was really Sarit's baby, she had this amazing, brilliant dream to create, to like let, you know, everyone tries to get an appointment with her and it's impossible. Yeah, and she told really us to give it, to like give it to the whole to world. To do it globally. And to yeah. empower yourself to choose for yourself what it is that you need on the journey. Because like we were talking about a little bit earlier, like, our life shifts and it moves and our needs are not the same. And we are not the same women we were yesterday. And we're constantly in evolution. And so bracelets that address healing at different parts of your life that can be there with you at different parts. And sometimes the old stuff comes back up right. and you got to go back there. Yeah. You're talking about picking bracelets. I put my bracelets out in the morning and I'm saying, what am I feeling? Like, am I feeling like I'd like a little up in happiness? Am I feeling like I need my anxiety to be on, uh, you know, on pause? Do I, do I need mental focus today? You know, what are, my, what are the things that my body needs to balance? Yeah. And Sarita and I had, we're, you know, we've known each other for a while. And then when we brought Joyce on board, it was like, catapulted the business literally launched in three weeks oh my gosh it was that's what, that's what told us. unbelievable yeah. like, i'm just trying said, to yeah. Yeah. Got us on the yeah. like yeah. I yeah. 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 that was us last night yeah. Yeah. so when no, joy so what was complicated it, so so i think from a like if you go into well, the actual business product developer from a product development standpoint it was impossible uh, yeah. you know she wants a level of purity. It's she wants so to see Hashem's every bead <laughs> that we buy. Um, and also just every single prescription for an ailment within the wellness bracelets 
is a completely different combination. It's never ending. So even from a volume perspective, if you want to get the best quality at the best price and you have to buy the volume, well, there might be only 4% of that in that bracelet only. You know, how much, you know, of right. that do I need to own? So, so just, there were just struggles. There was launching the website. There was the Instagram. There was influencer, you know, outreach. There was um, setting up a corporation. You know, there's all the, the things right. that there right. is. Right. Packaging, right. right, all of these things. So, um, but when you, when we talk about like, um, well, that's getting back to the maximize because that's to keeping you, things simple, but to just, right. just to finish, to wrap that point mm -hmm. is that we just have to go. Mm -hmm. Success isn't a destination. Success is the action point. Like success to me is creating a, a Kaylee, like creating a vessel in which blessing is drawn. If you can't get to the vessel part, how <laughs> Hashem's probably like, what's doing? Let's right. move, right. you know? Right. Right. And you know, and this person's like, you know, wanting to open her health, you know, practice, but she can't get the website right. At some point, you have to stop thinking what other people are going to think and you just got to go. And I always say, like, start, adjust, start, adjust, like, because that is that is business. And guess what? When you're 30 years in a business like my dad with BCBG or me with Generation, BCBG Generation. Is that what we is that had? Yeah, right now? we had to. So, no, BCBG was um, my your dad's company yes and no. it was, you know, 30 companies. Um, and I ran BCBG Generation and, and multiple other brands. And. I would see that, huh? Avec. and Avec Lefi is my brand, but um, basically um, I would see that like there were shifts that we had to make even in an existing company. You cannot sleep. You know, you cannot sleep. You have to be constantly in the action mode. And that's success is like partnering with Hashem on a mission and moving mm -hmm. because that's true success. Whether something is a win or, 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 a, or a loss or a seeming loss, I always tell my kids, like, just do your best and Hashem is going to do the rest. And that's Shara Bitachon. Like, mm -hmm. at, the, at some point, we just have to do mm -hmm. and let Hashem give us the journey. And that's the most beautiful part. I think I... And I, trust Hashem that what we've chosen yes. is what's meant to be. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, so would you say simplifying it means Simpli uh, um, leaving the out, like chatter, letting the outside off. noise stay yeah. away, like yeah. zoning in on what you actually want to really do. I'm really trying to take away that type A ness and and all of us everyone has a little like has a little bit of it just, just 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 relax it's like don't overthink yeah, don't just do overthink. don't obsess right. right don't think about what people are going to think if you want to start this instagram page because you are your stylist just start but some people will say be patient it and, takes time and yeah. um make sure your product is really good like don't rush what, what would you say to that it depends with the person. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it really is. depends. With and it depends on the personality too. Yeah. Exactly. Someone just like jump the gun too yeah. quick, then you want exactly. to slow down a little bit. I was working with a company um, last year that was doing, you know, close to ten million dollars with one product, and they literally started out by buying it in a flea market, and it was like that, and then it became this, and then they got a product development person to actually make it better, and within those years, they made a ton of money. But they, 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 they started. And yeah. they were able to affect the lives of so many people. Mm -hmm. But if they would have sat there and said, you know, maybe we want to take it to X. Of course, it's good to be a perfectionist and it depends what you're doing. Well, you know, it's obviously. like our podcast also when we started, like we, mm -hmm. we had to look at every word we were sharing and we were so nervous. You know, we were nervous before each one. I mean, we, when we watched the interview that we did with John, Rebel Lord, Jonathan Sachs, I wasn't even sure if we want, I wanted to put out the video recently. Right. We put out the video because... I was like, Ida, we would have done such a different job today. <laughs> but Hashem wanted it us to do it. It was incredible. I watched it. So it you amazing. watched it? Yes. It we would have, I don't know. We just feel like we've, we've grown because we've been doing it again and again and again. But we chose to do it then, even though we, it wasn't who we are today. Um, but we just decided we were doing it. We're going to take the opportunity. And, and also, this is when Hashem wanted us to do true. it. And I feel like it, it, it is very, we're very into the, like the vision and the looks and the creative and things having a certain vibe. But in the same time, at the same time, I think today in 2023, people are really searching for meaning and for co good content. And like, if you have that great, amazing content, it doesn't yeah. matter if it doesn't look perfect. Right. Eventually, you will work on that, but exactly. don't waste time yeah. in that. Like, give people what they're what they want. Yeah. Whether that be an amazing product, an amazing service, like it just that's what people are looking for. If somebody so, told me that this amazing acupuncturist and like I go into the office and it's like not that nice, I don't care. Like yeah, I just want to true. feel good, you know, yeah. like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm told because the audio we had put out and we yeah. were happy. But when recently our social media manager said to us, I think video. you should put out the video. And we're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> we're, we're critical. Yeah. We're, we're critical yeah. of ourselves. And right. what I've learned now 
<clears throat> kind of coming into my 40s, I am so much nicer to myself. Yeah. I am so much nicer to myself. And I even look back at my journey and I, and I have empathy on me. <laughs> so tell us about that. Um, I think that, um, I think that also growing up in a, in a public eye is a very difficult thing. I think that when you're the daughter of somebody, I literally knew how to say that's the daughter of BCBG in every language. Everywhere I went, everything I did, I felt like people were looking at me. Um, and I felt very much a victim to, to, to the outside chatter. And, 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 and I'm a person pleaser. And I want to make sure that I always look the best, do the best, do it all right. And, <clears throat> and today, I'm... I, I don't apologize in the sense that I'm, I'm really myself. That's and amazing. if it's comfortable for you, so I'm so happy. And if it's not comfortable for you, I'm also so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, um, yeah. because I'm not I love trying to, I'm not, and I'm not trying to look for love in, 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 in the outside. I'm really trying to cultivate the love within myself. And, mm -hmm. and I know how much Hashem loves me. So that's the true love and that's the bucket that I fill today. And, and when you talk about like kind of one of the pillars in our relationship being learning, and you can even apply this to business, when you learn more and when you have more knowledge of Hashem and more connection to Hashem and, and a bigger love story, so the rest is also very quiet. We're very comfortable with who we are, where we go, what people think of us. We're not looking for the approval. We have the love of Hashem. <laughs> when did you start to feel that Hashem um, loved you? I really, I think learning, learning changed my life. Um, there. What do you like to learn, Shara yeah. So yeah, it was actually um, a girl in LA, um, Hana Yakovlev. She's an attorney. She. Uh, I think she texted me when I was in the hospital. There were rounds of Tehillim going around when I was, uh, after I delivered Mordechai. And I, I could literally feel people's davening. It was an incredible thing. I was, my body was broken. Like I couldn't walk or sit. Um, but I could feel like a global love and, and I, could, I could feel the, the davening and I, could, and I strengthened myself. Um, but she told me, she said, you have to make it through this. I think she wrote me a text because I want to learn portions of light with you. Or she was, I want to learn. And she said, whatever, I don't remember what it was exactly. She said, I want to learn with you. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I got to get out of this because I have to learn with her. And when, we, when I got out and um, I was able to learn and, and remember, my body was crushed, my spirits and had, had were just had crushed. A baby. Yeah, and I just had a baby. And, um, and learning for me was, was refua, like it was medicine. And as I was learning, I would meet people. And when they would tell me that they wanted to do business mentorship or something like that, I would say, why don't we learn for 15 minutes and we can chat about whatever's going on. And, and that's actually when I left, Rachie, she left me the cutest voicemail when I, when I, when I met her the first time. But one of the, the main points was let's learn together. And that's what we did. We, for the first, I think, mm -hmm. and couple I just, months, yeah, we And were I just, just want to pause learning. right there and tell you that I'm so, like, I'm actually honored to be sitting in front of you because I have spoken to many different types of people, religious, not religious, who have told me that they have learned with you and, wow. and actually changed, oh, changed their lives. Oh, uh, wow. towards um, <laughs> feeling closer to Hashem <laughs> and <laughs> taking this on podcast. new mitzvah. Really? <laughs> yeah. That is unbelievable. That yeah. is that is the reason oh, I wanted yeah. to, to interview yeah. you. And when I met Rachie, I loved her energy and I uh, wanted to best. just speak to both of you. I, I just love that you have a business going and you're a go-getter <laughs> and, and that you're both um, tzni, like Tzniyot and uh, an example yeah. of what a Jewish woman today should be. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So nice. but I, want, I wanted to know how you juggle, like you had the baby and you were determined to go and um, learn with this woman and you have a business going and you, you have a husband oh, yeah. and you have a, a best, you have good friends. How, how did you, how do you juggle and fit all that in to your day and your life? So we got aboard. We, we got aboard. <laughs> oh, yeah, back to the board. Um, and she has to I, write everything down. I think it's very important to lay it all out there yeah and now I think that that is how you so also much. realize that it's it, it is fit. you don't have enough hours in the day to mentor everyone and people are always sending people yes, your exactly way. i'm trying so to figure out how to put get everybody together mat, yeah i remember when i met my husband uh, it was a rabbi who, who set us up and i used to go to him and i used to just tell him my entire life 
And on my husband's side, he was doing the same. So I think he looked at us at one point and he was like, well, if I put those two together, I'm going to save a lot of time. <laughs> so I think that that's what this class was about. I did a podcast with Yael Trush and she has such a good energy about money. Oh, she's money. Yeah. Money coach, oh, right? Yeah. She has such a, I, she has such a right energy about yeah. money. Um, it's so spiritual. Money oh, is nice. so spiritual. And she has, she has, I, I really think she has the Rebbe's Bracha. Like she, she really has something special. And we did a podcast and we got a crazy amount of emails. And One I minute, so you have a podcast? Me, no, no, no. I did a, I was oh, interviewed on her podcast. On her podcast. Okay. And then people were literally finding, fi found my cell phone number and they were like, oh, just five minutes. I heard your podcast. And I, okay. And could you do business mentorship? And I, and I, and I couldn't do it. I went to visit Rachie. Actually, we had some business meetings in New York and I went to the Rebbe. And I, I, I always want to do everything I'm doing because it excites me in fashion, yeah. ex wellness, You've got so many everything. talents, so what do you do? I, I, I love it, but I want to help people. Right. You know, my father used to be interviewed before every runway show, and his mission was always the same one. I want to make women feel beautiful. It's like, I have a mission. I want to change the world. I always wanted to change the world. Um, and I feel like this is how, how you do it. So I, anyway, so I went to the Rebbe mm -hmm. and I was like, when the Rebbe was alive, or no, to no, the no, this is to the, to the and I went, uh, on a trip and I got back to the airport and I was like, I have to help people. I have to help people. And I was, I was talking to Sarit about it. And Sarit's like, Joyce, you just have that. You just have it. You look at someone's business and you can, you can, you so can is that what you do now? No, no, oh. no, no. So, <laughs> so no, thank God I have, I have my own businesses. I have businesses with mm -hmm. Rachie and I, I wanted to create a vessel in which I could accommodate the, the, you know, this, this request. And so it was so organic. And I picked up the phone after, after leaving the oil and I, I went to the airport, I picked up the phone and I called Yael and I said, do you think that we could do something together so that she could do all of the stuff that's a little too hard for me to coordinate and all of these things. But we had such a, such a, you know, good dynamic through this podcast. And so we created this program and it's going to be amazing. Oh, wow. From, so what is yeah. the program? So it's, it's, it's called Maximize. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's truly, it's truly something that I never thought I would ta teach because it's something so innate within me. My father's life was about maximizing everything. Everything was to the max. His name was Max. Right. He was born on Rosh Chodesh, <laughs> Hanukkah, New Year's. Like he's like, um, he, he's, everything was huge. Shabbos was huge. Rosh Chodesh Tevis? Was, yeah, no, so Kislev. Oh, no, Rosh wait, Rosh. is he, no. Yeah, Kislev. Well, Kislev, Hanukkah. yeah. Yeah. So he was, uh, he was a small man and everything was so big. His company was big. His heart was big. And, and, and everything he did was big. And I was telling Rachie on the way here, I would wake up in the morning and have an amazing dream. And my father would tell, tell me your dream. And we would sit there and we would talk about it. And he'd say, let's make it a movie. Then we're going to oh, make wow. it a book. And everything <laughs> was taking everything to the next level. I was actually happy to see my son did a lemonade stand. And they made, thank God, a lot of money. They were very, very successful. And so I paid for my lemonade and I went to park and he came to see me and he said, do you think parking is free? <laughs> <laughs> At least he's oh maximizing. But so, yeah, so the, so the idea behind this podcast is a lot of us sit and we have assets. A lot of us have a company. Well, it's a, not a podcast. I mean, it's not a, a podcast, a, a, a class, course. a class, but a lot of us have these these things already going and we don't know how to be the Shabbos of our own week. We don't mm -hmm. know how to go above ourselves and see how can I perform better as a leader? What can I give off to somebody else to do that's occupying my time? How can I align myself with the idea of licensing, marketing? How can I expose myself to concepts that are bigger? And I tell you, my entire life was a training to think big because everybody I met was a CEO, um, owner of a major corporation, somebody living out their passion. And everyone was, was magnetic and to the max. Um, and so as I see myself, you know, trying to pull myself into different people's businesses, you know, then it gets, it, it always ends up getting a little bit, you know, involved. Mm -hmm. um, and so here we run into create it in a more, global way, yeah. clear way. And in a global way that everybody can just jump on, listen to a mastermind, expose themselves to a conversation at such a high level that will pull you out of your mundane and if you elevate have an idea you. to yeah. start a business. If you're stuck, if you're, we hear it all the time. Any, just what, I mean, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking it. <laughs> it's like, I, I would like to take it too. It's yeah. like having a business coach. Yeah. 
Yeah, but from it's, all the it's, best. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we also have amazing speakers who are like, I was talking to my friend who's the CEO. He, he, he's actually a venture capitalist. And I was telling him that I want to do it. And he's like, wait, 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 I want to do it with you. I have so much to say on the topic. I have so much to inspire because of his journey. And I think so you're one of the teachers. Yes, mm -hmm. I am. Me and Yael. And then we have um, yes. guests that are coming on um, to speak in areas of finance, real mm -hmm. estate, e-commerce, fashion, um, and also exposing yourself to different industries. Like I loved growing up in a home that was open, industrially open, because it always gave great input if you could apply, if you could apply it in your space. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what this is about, and I'm and I'm so excited about it. And and you know we launched it yesterday, and, and like you were saying about things being perfect, there was so much more perfection we could have have come to, but yesterday launching it on Instagram, having so many people write and comment and say like, this is so right, this is so feels so good. Um, it's like healer. It's like everything that it's you know. It's so exciting. I think it when should you're be with a lot of muscle. Amen, amen, and it should amen, help amen. many, yeah. many people grow their businesses. Amen, amen. I mean, the healer's collection, I think, it, the, I think the beauty of it for both of us and for Sarit is that it really is, it's a wellness. It's like a, it's, it's a stories. movement. It's the stories. It's just helping. The stories and the, get me. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's really incredible. And the fact that like she could take some of that, that she, she I mean, Joyce has been in every business, but being on this seminar and teaching and everyone can kind of get a little piece of her when they're all trying to it's and hopefully really we'll laugh a lot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great such a, what a gift because most people who want to launch a business don't have the same access to maybe some of the things you had access to early in mm -hmm. your life and so you're giving them that access yeah, you don't know what you a don't lot of know. people need because most entrepreneurs statistically will fail or will at least experience multiple failures before right. they reach success mm -hmm. so it's a it's sort of like a fast pass hey let me tell you what you know, what I know so that we can maybe hopefully steer you on this path. How do you, um, well, first let me ask, it's inevitable that we'll encounter some failures or mistakes, learning opportunities along the way. What are some major setbacks that you had and what did you learn from them in okay, uh, so business? I, I would say business. Yeah. So for my company, for Rachi Schnee, um, I really became known for the Mazel collection, which is all the Magenza V jewelry and and um, Israel and Chai and all this stuff that I and beautiful just went crazy. Yeah, and everything it. for handshake, so anklet, earrings. We're both wearing the earrings and uh, and the watch, the right? Watch. watch. It. This was for Israel seventy fifth with Armatron. Uh, and I didn't. I knew when I started the company. First of all, I never wanted to do jewelry. My mom had a jewelry business, and I did not want to. Do it. I don't <laughs> know. It, it just happened. And that's and, how you pick your business. And yeah, mm -hmm. and. Um, I wouldn't, it's so, I, when I, I speak all the time, I spoke at the Why You orientation last week for the Stern Girls, and I was saying, I'm like, I'm not going to say diamonds are my passion. They're not my passion. Inspiring people and attracting people with the sparkle is my passion, bringing them closer and then really telling them what I want to tell them, you know? And I sound, I sound like I'm a cult leader. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a cult leader. I mean, you're cult. I mean, you're cult. <laughs> you're an inspired, empowered yeah, woman. <laughs> no, but I, I knew, I've always been so proud and so passionate about who I am as a granddaughter of survivors, as a Jewish Orthodox woman, as um, just loving Judaism, loving the beauty of Judaism, which definitely became more potent in my life when I, be, when I became more religious with Chabad at the University of Michigan with Rabbi Alter and Hanshi Goldstein. And they really brought, they really showed me the whole other side of Judaism. I grew up modern Orthodox, but it was different and it was a little bit more rigid in the school that I went to. And seeing the beauty of Judaism through Chabad has opened my light to everything. And Hani Krasniansky, who I took her class every week for 15 years with my mom every Thursday. Hani Krasniansky in, in Manhattan. In the Upper East Side, yeah. where, where, where I'm from and I live. Um, she literally, she took it to the next level and I started this jewelry business with my sister originally. And then she ended up, we ended up separating because she took another, um, opportunity. And I, <laughs> I remember wanting to create the Mazel ring. I actually was inspired by an amazing, amazing, very close friend, Hannah Fallick, who had gifted me something like similar to them, something with like Magen Zavid. And she's like, you need to make this, you need to sell this. And she's one of the proudest Zionist Jewish incredible women I've ever met in my life. And she's such a big force in my life. And I took her advice and I created the Mazel ring. And I have my mom's permission to say this, but my mom was just like, mm, nobody's gonna buy that. 
<laughs> she, not in a bad way, just in a way of like, we were, you know, she comes from very fashionable stylist. Like she's like beyond brilliant when it comes to fashion. And she's a Barbie. That's what we call her. She is Balabusta, Barbie. Balabusta, Latina Barbie. <laughs> and um, she won't take it off now. Like she's the mazel queen. Oh, but, there you go. But um, in the beginning when I had to put a lot of money into it and, I, you know, other things were more popular like flowers and hearts and just regular tennis necklaces and yeah. things like that. I was like, no, I want to make this. And I'm putting Am Yisrael Chai on all of the rings. And I am so passionate about it. You know, the Nazis took And it's this, popular now. So this whole, I worked really hard at it. And that's another thing. Like, things don't just happen. You know, yeah. like, I literally was like blood, sweat, and tears every day. Went on Instagram and was sending it to all these different celebrities and, and just making it something that we... And it was at a time when it wasn't cool at all. And, and you know, all this anti-Semitism was arising. And people would think that it's the opposite, that they don't want to wear Magen Zavid because they're scared. And honestly, it's had an op. It's it's completely the yeah. other end right now. Everyone's like, I'm Jewish. I'm proud. I love who I am. And so I started it. I launched it. And it took time. I actually launched September 2019. So it was right before COVID. And that's when I, my website went live. And full force Mazel collection. And like I said, the Nazis took the Magen Zavid, which was a a symbol that they made us ashamed of, our symbol that they took from us and made it something that if we were wearing it, we were shot, we were killed. It was something that we were ashamed of and embarrassed. And I'm like, no, 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 we're taking that back and we're making it something cool and fabulous and hip and stylish and all these beautiful, amazing Jewish women are going to be wearing it all over the world. That's so meaningful. I can't and take so, mine off. Like, and I it's can't. funny because the first day we met, this is so <laughs> I didn't know that that's the this meaning is, behind Like, oh, it's yeah, your so grandparents. It's on my I'm website saying, and it's yeah. actually pretty crazy because... I'm going to tell that story in a minute, but it's crazy because um, I'm named after my grandfather's sister, whose name was Rachel Schnee, and she was killed in Belzich when she was six years old. Her la- so her, her name last was name? actually Rachel Schnee, oh. Rachel Schnee was okay. her name, and she was killed at six years old, and that's wow. my parents named me after her. And so this you totally name, have it within you. But this name is also on every bag, on every pouch, wow. on every, it's, it's her, you know, I'm, I'm, li- I'm living the life that was stolen from her. And it's almost like my whole company and my essence is, is, is like an ode. It's like, it's like in the schluss, it's honoring her every single day. Every time wow. I say my name and somebody's like, oh, Rachel Schnee, that's Rachel Schnee. I'm like, I'm not the original Rachel Schnee. You know, I, right. I wrote, I'm just like, I'm just an imposter. You know, I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not an imposter, but that I'm like, is amazing. my name is on rent. You know, like it's really, this was all for her, you know, so. But I must just tell you to add to that, that you, you became Chabad. And Chabad's philosophy yes. is really to take the material yes. and make so it that, spiritual. Yes, I say this all the and time. And you've taken the jewelry. So that's exactly what it which is. Which is the I, most materialistic thing. Yes. And and you've elevated it. It's, yes. In such and a that's beautiful what I, way. I, that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted to do. I wanted to create something that is spiritual, taking the material and elevating it and making it something that really would. And I, it's it's so insane and unbelievable. And it's I'm just the vessel, really. Like it's unbelievable to watch. I feel like I'm Crazy. watching from above, you know. Like, <laughs> And it's like these women, South Africa, Australia. If you see another like, Mazel Club member, you a freak woman out. That, a Jewish woman like, that was ah! in Zimbabwe came and bought one. Like, just like unbelievable. They all, they became, it's really the Mazel Club. And they all have this like energy and they see each other at the airport. And they're like, you're part of the Mazel Club, my Mazel And it's like the cutest thing. And I'm like, I feel like a proud mama, you know, I'm just like chefing nachos. And amazing. I'm like, it's amazing. My mom's sitting on the plane. She was like going to Italy and this woman's like, oh, that you're wearing the Mazel ring? And my mom's like, yeah. Well, I had Australian friends texting me that they were in Israel and we just yes. met Rachel Schnee and we bought yes, her jewelry. They did. They so came you, to my it's hotel all, room. The, all the way at the other end of the world they you did. have people exactly. wearing jewelry. It's, it's amazing. And I, and I guess there was such a need for it. And, it like, and I was really given this bracha to like fulfill that need of being proud and, being, and, and not hiding who you are. And also in a cool way and not yeah. in like a shameful way. Yeah. And, and I really, honestly, this is why I was like, I want to make this because I'm looking for it myself. And a lot of successful businesses, that's how it starts. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. Crocs started because like the mom was wearing these garden shoes and she's like, this is so easy to put on and off. I'm making it for my kids bajillion dollar company you know bajillion bajillion they're in the bajillion and so and this is what i was searching for so i'm like i want cool fun jewish jewelry so that's what i did and it just never ends and it keeps going thank god and um when we first met i was like i want to give you a a mazel ring and she's like i don't think i'm gonna wear it and i'm like (laughs) why not she just like it, I, this I is a lot of women. No, they don't feel like it's their thing. Have, then they put it on yeah. and they're like attached she's to it like, forever. You know, and and I think you know I, I'd like to give you a piece. And and I I I 
typically where things have a lot of meaning for me. I just met her. And, yeah, and, and, <laughs> it's a bit and much. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, it was like a big thing yeah. to receive from somebody who, you know, and especially if you're on the side of giving a lot, like you're much more comfortable with that, yeah. that kind of output. And, and, um, and I really love, my husband has great taste and he always, and he loves jewelry. He used to be a jeweler. So he loves to get me things that are really meaningful and I'm very connected to. Um, and when I met Rachie and she offered to give me something, I was like already like, oh, I don't know. You know? <sighs> and then um, I started to wear it and it's like, I don't think I wear a piece that doesn't have now a Magen David. Or, um, and this is what I was ex expressing to you earlier about like being more kind to yourself. Um, when you work in an industry like fashion, you know, you're trying to express different DNA across every brand that you do at price points you know, at different price points, et cetera. And um, so I always made myself a blank canvas to concentrate on the DNA of the, of the work. Like the shoemaker has no shoes. I don't attribute too much love or time to, to, to taking care of myself because I'm in this business. It's what I do all day. Um, but I feel like the jewelry that Rachie makes and when you like adorn yourself with it, it, it like brought back my love of fashion in the sense for myself. Like if you talk about like, was I passionate being born into fashion? No, it's the only thing I really, really know. You right, know, it's right, like, right. It's, it's how I was born. Right. It's the dinner conversations. It's every moment when I needed my dad's attention and he's like, no, what's the markup? What's the this, yeah. what's the fabric? Yeah. You know, that's what I know. It's what I hear. And um, in the morning when I, when I, put on Rachie's things and, and I, I feel like I adorn myself in my value system, in my essence, and it's such a powerful thing. And, and, and well, it's also the meaning behind it. Yeah, like, and just, obviously it's like a fashion is expression. You know, fashion is always an expression yeah. of yourself. Yeah. And sometimes um, it's presented to us in a way that doesn't work and so we have to re, right. you know, reintroduce it right. to ourselves in a, in a, way a that different does. lens. Right. Yeah. right. But you right. asked the question of, setback. So yeah. I would say, yes, I kind of became known for this, just like many business owners become known for some certain product or development. And I, there were all obviously a ton of copies and, and people, you know, selling every Magenta Vid ring that right. was exactly the same, easy one real copy. fake, this, that. Definitely. I don't own the Magenta Vid. Right. I'm not claiming that at all, but it definitely is something that I know I'm proud of myself for making it what it is right. at this point right. in fashion. Right. But um, I never, of course, when I first see it on Instagram or somebody, people are sending it to you. Everybody gets all heated. Like, oh, look, did you see this? Did you see that? And I'm like, the first thought is like, oh, like you just like your blood's boiling. Yeah. Yeah. But then, and I feel like we learned this together and really Shar Bitachon and Beis Halevi like changed my life in business and just in every day. Yeah. Every single, all you day, every day. You sent Beis is that book Beis that's like Shar It's Bitachon. based on Shar Bitachon. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's amazing. You sent me that and book. Now yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and, and now we're learning And it's yeah. also daily, and daily Bitachon, which we listen to every day is a 10 minute um, little thing on WhatsApp that you get every day from Michael Saftia. And it's Mind yeah, I'm on that. I'm on I that listen to it every day, yeah, yeah. and he could say the same thing every day, and I'm right. like, oh, tell me more. <laughs> you know, so. do you know Rabbi Shays Taub? He also has a podcast on Shara Batachan, yes, and it's like oh, it's yes, 20 yes, minutes yes, a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's also it really good. So you told me, I told her. So, okay. Um, <laughs> she basically, I, I really, it really resonated with me, and I have to hear it over. But I'm like, okay, Hashem says sets exactly what you're supposed to make, lose, make this, that, gain every Rosh Hashanah. So. If this is happening, and if this person decides to buy that piece of jewelry from the other company, that's what it is. Like that's what it was supposed to happen. I don't need to get jealous. I don't need to get confrontational. I, I I'm known in the industry for never confronting or or talking to anyone. I don't. Are you, I, I, are you the type to confront? Not really. I mean, You're I'm not. I don't like drama and confrontation. But like, if I you like clean, you would yeah. bring it to the surface and but, probably talk yes, about so it. Yes. Right? So I, I don't like confrontation. But I. But I definitely feel like I want to, I stick up for myself, like I'll, but not in this way, in other ways, but for this, um, I, I, I really have tunnel vision when it comes to business because I don't care what anyone else is doing. I'm like, I, the, it doesn't matter because it's, it's what's meant to come to you will come to you. The blessing right. is going to come to you. Was that a process or have you always been that way? Like I, I think I've always been that way, but outside sources kind of always kind of like 
made me not trust as much right. or maybe and that's not. only natural so, so, totally yeah yeah <laughs> but totally and I feel like I I have to go through that in my head every even when I do get annoyed because I'm human and I'll yeah. be like that's so frustrating and this person tried to do that and she knows that I'm doing this and this and it's in the end of the day I'm just like okay but like it's all set it's done there's nothing I can do and it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of feeling jealous and like stressed and and it, it is definitely we both get that feeling and it comes to us and then we're just like oh but I feel like the failure is, my, is, is seeing yourself in a limited way. Like, you know, like if I were to bring up this idea to my father, he had a brand called Hervé Leger, and I would go to the mall and I would see like, <clears throat> guess his whole front window or BB's whole front window back in the day with the exact copy. I would buy a couple skirts, take it back to our legal department, be like, this is, this is not okay. <laughs> yeah. My dad would be like, it's okay, there is for everybody. You know, That's like, so the, amazing the, and lesson. I think that the limitation and the failure is seeing yourself as one skirt That's or, right. or seeing right. yourself as a Magen David, because then everything, everybody comes at you. It's like they're taking from your pizza. Guess what? What if you own every pizza place in the world? Then how big is your pizza? So it, it's, it's about focusing on making the pie bigger. It's about focus on seeing yourself you know, my father was somebody who went to very high heights and very low lows. I mean, we didn't have dinner and then we had chefs and, and you know, acres. And, um, and you have to be very careful to not identify yourself to the outcome that Hashem sometimes brings you, especially in business. Like if you don't want to fail, do not get into business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to fail, do not walk out your door. You know? Um, can, I tell, can I tell you that I relate to you a lot in many things? I'm also the oldest daughter. I'm the daughter of someone. I grew up with a very high profile father, and he's also gone through his highs and lows. I also grew up in a very, with a, in oh, a wow. very open home. Wow. Um, yeah, so I also, I always feel like my mother had such an open home, and she's so good to other people. I always feel like I can never keep up. Yeah. And I was actually, I wanted to ask you how you are able to be there for yourself because you said now you you, oh, you are good I'm to yourself so and and also myself. you're a giving person how you also are able to be there for others and your family I like, think really how do you how that. are you thoughtful oh, in boundaries. the process i think boundaries were really important yes Sorry. i think boundaries but also to be able to channel when i felt like people had needs i would quickly go to their need before mine um and now i'm like how can i create efficiencies within their needs and looking at it like business made it easier for me like i have all these people who want this thing from me and i see this theme come up 10 times in a day and i feel like i'm like wait right. you need help and you need help and you need help right. and so meanwhile if i needed help it was like well let's put that to the side because all these people need help um so and so i'm trying do? to create efficiencies like even this business ma master class it's, it's really about there is so many people asking me for the same thing I know clearly I have a bracha from Hashem. I know that I can create somebody who has the vision and the time and the, and the organization to do this right and has the right energy. I'm going to align myself with, with another powerful woman to create a place where I can house all of these things and not neglect it. And some things I've learned to say no to. And that, that's, um, I, I had a business partner and he told me like the things I say no to are more important than the things I say yes to. Yeah. He said, and, and so he yeah. was saying, say yes to the more, he was saying you, you weren't doing it. It's more important to analyze what you say no to because mm -hmm. it, it's really important to create that boundary within yourself. And I think that having somebody like my father who had such an open home and really no boundaries, I try and exist that way from a heart perspective, but I try and be more practical today. Like if my children need me, I don't need to have 50 people for Shabbos. If my children need me, I can make it another week or I can invite all these people, make sure I have them all on invitation in two weeks from now so I feel good about myself that I'm addressing their needs or, you know, kind of trying to create places like that. And I think, Sari, yeah, definitely. I think that um, my friend Margie told me something very cute. She said, it's lonely at the top in the sense of if you see yourself as somebody who's, you know, you, you have to do the balance sheet with yourself. Are you a leader? Are you somebody that needs to have leading and coaching and do you need things like that? I think I was born, I was born to be in the front, you know? When my husband talks to me about davening, he just lost his father and now he's, you know, davening and he has all these people behind me. Every time he talks about it, I'm excited because I, I feel that it's a character, you know? Um, so let's say you have 
many more people that want to talk to you in a day and you know that it would be a mitzvah. But, right. So well, what would you all, do? First of like, give a man a fish, Teach him, yes. teach him how to fish. Yes. That's yeah. the first thing. Totally. And I, I, yeah. think, I think that's, and that's really, that really gets to the guts of it because I think as soon as I can um, attune someone to, to, to exactly what you said and give them the practical ideas, then I don't have to sit there with them right. for hours. Right. And, I, and I know how to do it because when you manage large teams too, you have to, there's two things. You have to create efficiencies, but you also have to lead with inspiration. And like, so for me, like I look up to my best friend and I say, she is such, so clear with who she is that everybody else has to be very clear. And it's helped me even in my leadership because I was a little bit bending to please people. And I think today... That's why I asked you this. Yeah. <laughs> because I, you I call, felt like... Do you call each other out on stuff oh, that yeah. you notice in each other that oh, needs yeah. to change? She did this morning to me. <laughs> but that's really great because it's She's hard like, to be objective. Sometimes you... I'm not even going to say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to it and and you know you love each other. So it's kind of like, a good you're place. Right. And I literally was like... I was like it, it, but you're you just have like, to well, love and then I said, so much and then I said, you're right, community. you're right. And I heard, and I'm like, I hate that you see that, and like, I'm changing because like, we, we've I don't done like that, that to each other. Yeah. We, we were able to share that with each other and listen. Yeah, and yeah. also when when it hurts, we know it's probably true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. But yes. I also yeah. I, I can take it from her because I know that she appreciates me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If, <laughs> I, if, I, from I, imagine, the right person. if I imagine, but if anyone else says it to each other, no. I imagine standing in front of the Rebbe. Yeah and him calling me out on something or giving me a different vantage point. How could I take any offense? Because I know that the Rebbe would have seen me with so much love that there is no, there is no problem with coming from a place of love, pushing somebody a little bit more forward. And like you said, I think when it comes to fear and when it comes to places where you feel like shame or, or certain things like that, like these are really the things that in life we have to say, this is part of our mission. Like I see with Hashem, like people will ask me like, how do you know what you're supposed to be doing? Like, how do you know? Um, and I say, had start at the you. things that you're very good at and then start at the things that really scare you. Um, and I remember as a child, like both? Yes. At the same time? Yes, because you have to go above nature, which means you have to break into the things and the places that you don't want to go. And that's how you show Hashem, I'm, I see you and I know you're here with me. So I can be vulnerable and I can be scared. And you're making the effort. And I'm still going to be, I'm doing the ishtadlis. Mm -hmm. Because if Hashem is with you, you know, how wow. can you be a big businessman if you have a fear of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, rejection, rejection say, yeah, which is whatever. a big one. Yeah. yeah. So you have to, A, look at this fear point and either take to it prayer, learning, you know, emuna, bitachon. You have to change your essence. My, my father would say, whatever somebody's nature is, we have to like break that nature. And I, I, I used to see my dad used to tell him, oh, this one, you're lazy. You need to learn to wake up at five because you're lazy. So like you have to find. And I, as a, as a, as a young woman, I had so much fear, so much anxiety. In fact, it's you the reason. You mean before you were married? Like yes. I was a person who's sensitive, who's an empath, who feel other people. Who my so we're, father? We're also yeah, yes, me too. yeah. My Are father would look at me Major, and know yeah. what he's saying, you know. And and I had to. And it was really only when I started to confront my fears, and and come closer to to, to my essence and my goal and my purpose that I was able to rise above, because we have to address the fear. And and I see this with Sarit with people who come I out was of just the sessions. Say, the reason I I'm such an empath to the point where I find I found Sarit, or she found me, however you want to say it, and in Israel, in Harno, in Jerusalem. Yeah, 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 we Shana had this. Shana. And um, the second I met her, I'm like, we became so close, and she, I host her in New York when she comes, so she sees people in my apartment in New York, in Manhattan, and I was, I'm so eager to, to, I feel so much pain from other, like, I feel everything, so I'm like, I need to have her in my apartment, and I need to have her all day with sessions, and I need, I know this person that needs this, and this person, that, and I'm just, like, constantly, like, I, it drives, it was, like, driving me crazy, because I know how powerful her, her healing is. So powerful. So powerful, it's and it's, anyone who meets her for that. a minute, like, they're just, like, ah, freaking out, and she's, and she's, like, such a bracha on this earth from Hashem, like, really, really for healing, and, uh, 
And then this business came along because, or this movement, I don't even like to call it a business because it's, it's not, it's really, it's a, it's incredible what's been happening. And this is how we were able to channel our empathness <laughs> and say like, Put we, it in a business. we want to help Let's everyone and we want everyone to do it on their own. And we want everyone to feel that vibe and that energy of, of just wanting to help themselves and, and help their the husbands, victim. not being So you brought out the positive of being an empath. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what you're working at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, and it's really, thank God, been going global and it keeps growing and there's amazing new product coming out and we're partnering with an opening in a very big way soon that everyone will see. Um, and yes, and it's, and even those people who are not Jewish, not from this type of healing background and they couldn't believe it. They were freaking out. They're from very big industries and they were just like, what did they say that, that about? Fa oh, oh that they were healing. saying, uh, these are people that I've worked with in the past. And in fashion, we have, you know, I've launched many brands with these people and they say like, there's a, we're not curing cancer. That's what they always fashion, say about fashion. Yeah. Like if we have a bad season, like we're not curing anything. Like be light with yourself. Negative two Q1, it's okay. You know, we're not curing anything. And when we presented the healers collection in the meeting, she looked at me as a joke and she said, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but maybe in a fashion environment, wow. we can be curing something big. And, and, wow. and, and, that's amazing. It's, it's really, it's really like, yeah, it's anything so can be channeled. Yeah. Huh? Even being like an empath, anything can be channeled. So yes. Be, feeling the world can, you know, serve you for better or worse. And I find the one thing that comes up quite a bit, and this is something that inspires us about you, is your connection to Jewish, your Jewish life and faith. And, you know, I saw someone, or I often hear people will say, that their upbringing was so constricting and it was so like harsh and there's so too many boundaries and it, it, it really didn't enable them to thrive in the way that they wanted yes. to thrive. And so they walked away from whether it's religion and, and specifically with fashion, you know, now it's gotten easier because fashion is maybe more modest, but maybe, maybe in like so the nineties, it wasn't the same thing. And so people are leaving and saying religion is too, it's they can't too wear much. the tight neck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're, kind of doing the opposite you're saying no this is this is liberating. Our, this is freedom yeah. it's liberating it is so, and honestly for yeah. those people if you're listening anyone who's listening get base halibi shar and that is that's the answer that you're going to search is that to. is that how you inspire yes. that woman to put on her shayshal oh well i don't know oh uh, we were talking about that a little yeah. bit before yeah how did you inspire? i didn't i don't i don't know if i have okay so i may have an effect in it obviously hashem had a timing for that person and i was the right you know, person at that time, you know, I speak sometimes in high schools and it's my favorite place to speak. Like we do a lot of public speaking and high schools, because you're at an age yeah. where you can, you can still allow yourself to change. Some people, they say once they're 30, I can't change. Once I'm 40, I can't change. I'm 60, I can't change. I'm, I'm very big. You can change at yes. any time and yep. reinvent yep. yourself at any age. But we know about that. Um, yeah, yeah. but in high anything. school, <laughs> I, you know, in high school, you know, I've had very, very, um, big Rebeam call me and say, you know, I know we don't know each other, but I need you to speak to my daughter. <laughs> when you were in high school? No, high no, school girl? no, no, just in no, my, in my life right, right. today. And, and, um, I, and, and I have a connection with this yeah. age. And, um, a lot of times what you're describing is there are, there is trauma in life. And sometimes we try and peg the trauma on the Judaism because it's so easy. It's, it's easier. I'll tell you, I used to peg everything on being rich. People don't really like me for who I am. I don't have any real friends because everybody's after my money. Um, do they like me or do they like coming to this crazy place with me in my, you know, whatever? Are they coming to visit me in Fisher Island or do they just want to hang out at my house? These types of things. Yeah, and I yeah. can, and you can peg everything on being rich and say, I want to be like the Aladdin, you know, there's a Disney movie, like run from my palace and be with the commoner. This idea, right. yeah. <laughs> this idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I see when from women who are true royalty, who are teenagers in high school and they're removing the yoke, they're removing their Judaism because this is a way to come back at their angers or their fears or their trauma. It's very normal. 
it's very normal. And many of them come back. It just takes time. Or sometimes they've gone so far off that they say they begin to identify with, with this image of, of their pain. Right. Um, they, and they need to find someone. And I, we, I saw this because I see so many people when I'm with her. Um, they need to find someone who's relatable. And someone then they like someone like Joyce, who they look at and they're she looks beautiful and she's fashionable and she cares about how she looks and she's just like so cool and so smart and so fun and can relate to them on another level. And it's hard sometimes when you're in these environments when everyone's kind of pushing everything on you and like nobody's getting on your level of just like, let's talk about it. But who am let's I to learn- judge? Who am I to judge? Don't I always say to people, don't Google me. Uh, don't Google me? Don't Why? Google don't Google image me. Because I literally <laughs> No, but you are to judge because she chose differently. She I'm chose saying, a I'm saying when. Well, you're when, not. You know, yeah, I'm saying when I address somebody who sneas is a hard one for them. We don't even talk about sneas. It's it's a non-issue. I, I would like to know who you are. I'd like to get to know you, and if you resonate with me, and if we can connect, and if we can grow together, and if I can learn something from you, and if you can learn something from me, and if we can heal together. And I I was addressing somebody. Um, who had a very um, big family, and you know it was tznias, tznias, tznias because of this who this person should marry. And when we got down to it, and she revealed her big secret to me, I understood it was very quickly <laughs> had nothing to do with like, the clothes, That's pretty and that amazing. if we could go in yeah. and talk about that issue, and she had that, she created that intimate space where we could talk about her trauma, then we could begin to. Th- Talk about Tznias in, in, in a few years to come, you know? And um, for me, though, I value modesty on such a high level. And so I think as somebody who comes from an industry where we put out trend. Right, what a And reframe. we dictate how people dress and we dictate how people should feel. And we dictate how quickly they should love a color before they should start loving another color. It's a very manipulative space. And when we design brands, from the architecture of how a financial model works with how much fabric we ascribe to in a piece of clothing because it needs to be sold at a certain price point. You could imagine that if fabric is guided by, if if clothing is led by fabric, so more fabric costs more money. So who's buying more fabric? And so the elevation, I understood very quickly, if I wanna put out a brand that is a designer brand, it's modest. Notes are modest. That doesn't mean that every piece you're gonna see is modest. People used to tell me, I go to BCBG, there's always something modest. Well, because we wanted a customer who has the ability to buy modest clothes right. <laughs> and pay for fabric. But then when you would go to Walmart and we were making, you know, a five pocket short, I mean, uh, you know, a five pocket denim short or a tank top, it's because there's a financial architecture to making less clothes and it costs less and there's less value. Interesting. Um, and, 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 and it's a real art of how you set the DNA for a brand and modesty is a note that is given to brands that are value driven, that are designer, that are elevated, that are for royalty. Mm-hmm. We were so, talking about yeah, it yesterday. We were, we were speaking about it yesterday. You don't see like Kate Middleton walking around yeah, in, in leggings. Just, yeah, <laughs> and, 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 we were, and it's true though, you don't see her walking around in shorts or, or leggings. And I, I'm not saying, I'm not judging at all. Yeah. Like everyone can do what they want. Absolutely. That's for me, not, just like any, you know, whatever. Everyone has their, their, thing that they're working on or not working on or feel very passionate about dressing a certain way. Um, but it's just interesting to see how someone like her, you just, it, it, it would be, if she was wearing like even tight jeans and a tank top, like it would be all over the new, it'd be like, ooh, ooh, right. yeah. but like, what is the difference? Well, you have a certain and, and expectation from her as yeah. being part of the royal family. Yes. And exactly. it's also so much bigger than modesty. This is like, don't no, decry is- something, don't blame something for discontent. It's exactly. like, take responsibility and work through it it could be that you don't like dressing modest, and that's fine. But I, I felt like for me, it was so hurtful to see, um, to hear someone say, religion is, you know, the reason I'm, hor- I'm miserable. Yeah. That to me was that, very That's jarring. an easy, that's a very simple. But what I wanted yeah. to yeah. say yeah. was, well, first of all, do, so do you believe that a lot of women who, let's say, uh, would take off their wig or, and they're just saying, you know what, I want to be more comfortable. Um, do you really think there's some kind of deeper layer going on that it comes from something? And they're just saying, I really just want to be comfortable and I don't like uh, long skirts. I like shorter ones. You know, they're just so, saying So the it. journey to self-love, you, there, there has to be love. And you have to believe that Hashem loves you. And that starts with 
loving yourself. And, um, and modesty is deeply intertwined with self-love because you're not looking for, for something. You're not looking for reaction, attention. You're, you're, you're actually looking to conceal, to reveal who you are. And so when you're looking to usually unrobe yourself, it's typically because there is something manifesting that you need, you need to connect with. Um, and so I find if, if somebody was wearing a wig and they're no longer wearing a wig, if somebody is, is, is modest and they're no longer modest, if, you know, um, these are things that it, it is not my place, yeah. Yeah. even we in fashion. It's such an intimate yeah. relationship. Yeah. That's like me saying, you know, how's your life with your, your husband? Right. Right. Uh, you know that kid that bothers you? How does it make you feel? Same like, thing as saying, so like, oh, why, why are you eating that cheeseburger? Okay. Like, yeah. it, everything is its own thing. Right. And it's, you can't No, even... I thought you were saying initially that you feel if someone is doing that, it could be coming, like you were saying, about coming yes. from trauma or something. T t typically, uh, typically, yes. Yeah. And, and in, every, in you, every case... Right, that, when you come from a family who is pushed... That's like not just because not like style yeah like I, I, you know it's so funny because people always tell me even when i wasn't religious like wow you're so you love god like you i woke up to a father every morning who's like hashem loves me <laughs> <laughs> literally that's, that's what i heard all day <laughs> like hashem was awesome i would i got into a car accident when i was 16 my dad was like dancing he was so happy it, it was like he gave me the opposite reaction on everything you that never knew what to expect because he so deeply believed that everything is from Hashem and how can Hashem send us anything but good? So it was awesome. And when he would fail, this was the best time to watch him. It was like a tiger well, about that's, that's to when leave the, the real. That's when yeah. you know if you actually believe Hashem oh, loves wow. you when you're oh, failing. Oh, wow. Failure. <laughs> he was like, and he would tell me, you know, people would come in to buy his company and these billion dollar valuations and crazy things and they would leave and I'd be like, so how was the meeting? You know, are you selling? Are you this? Are you that? He'd be like, what? Nobody scares me. I don't want anybody's money. I'm happy with a can of tuna. Because he, he didn't feel fear from any, anybody or needing to get... He was always so good with whatever Hashem is giving him that there was never any, like, never any so discomfort. So how was that in reference so, to... So, so I would think that, like, typically when people are in a failure mode, Okay. And well, they may not comes, be looking at it as a failing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People are in a time where you need to sell a part of your company. You know, you've leveraged so much debt. You've done something to a level that you cannot sustain this level. So there is fear. There is, I need this person to buy. There is this thing. And my dad would say, if I can't make payroll, I can't make payroll. If Hashem doesn't want me to pay people, then I'm not paying people. If it's not the right deal for all of my employees, if I can't look at people and say this was the right thing, then why would I rush into anything? And there was this sense of time is on his side because Hashem is on his side. And so that's like in the face of failure, it's super powerful. Yeah. So it's you were always powerful. spiritually inclined, like connected through your dad. And then, but, but through the, through faith and, and observance that came a little bit later. I think, I think I benefit from all of my dad's work right. as I was raised by him when he was in his older years and, and watching him already having worked with Amuna and Bitachon. Uh -huh. I, I think, so that was beautiful. So I think that channeled through me, which was huge. And I see with myself and my own parenting will channel through my kids where I'm at. But each of us is here on a mission. And we are the sum of all of those parts, our strengths, our weaknesses. And, and, and Hashem is giving us a very, a very happy, optimistic set of cards. All of us have one. And everything is how you see. And I, and I see when I see people telling me their stories and it's so hard and I don't see this cloud. So I, 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 th I think it's, 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 um, it's your ability to see past this like these ideas that you might make for yourself right. or, um, yeah. So, so I don't know where I was at. I have, I, uh, I no, we were, a little bit. We but. were saying, yeah, we know we were talking about if it's from trauma when you're going through some, such a thing, but I actually just want to put a positive spin on what you were sharing about the Tzniyot. And while I'm looking at you and thinking that you guys are trailblazers, um, we had done, Shays Taub had uh, did this whole course on analyzing some of the Rebbe's letters, oh. Igris, Yay. and one of them was called be a trailblazer. Ooh, and the Rebbe had, the Rebbe oh, had yeah, written a to a woman. A great one. Um, to, no one was covering the hair at that time. 
very few people in the 1970s. And actually my grandmother, who, who passed away this past year, who was very close to, he, he actually also told her, she, she was one of the first founding Chabad um, women to be living in Australia, and he asked her to wear a wig. But in this letter, he also asked this woman to put on a wig. Um, I think her name was Mrs. Shafstein. And um, he was saying that even though no, nobody else is doing it, you will see, you put it on and people will follow you. So I, That's Rachie. That's Rachie. That she doesn't care what anybody, I mean, she's like, I'm doing it. And just, then everybody wants to do it. Exactly. I was just going to say, it, so when she was talking, her. I kept almost trying to chime in, but I wanted her to finish. First of all, I, I truly believed, and I grew up in a very modern world. So I was wearing bikinis and everything. And like, there was never modesty pushed on me, except for wearing skirts to school. Then that was it. Like everything else I was, could wear whatever I wanted. And and with a very fashionable mother who always looks so fabulous. And I truly believe that I know so many women who are such holy, pure neshamas who do not follow the, our, like, whatever you want to call it, laws of modesty that we, that a lot of more modern or Orthodox women wear, um, like skirts and longer shirts and things like that. And I, because maybe I grew up from that, I, I look at them and I don't, see their clothing I really see like I really try to look at their neshamas and I see people and I'm like they're such amazing people and I don't care what they're wearing like it doesn't bother me and I but for me personally this is like I started to wear skirts um when I left the University of Michigan I transferred back to New York and and um it was a big big step for me it definitely was for my community like it, it's not that prevalent I'm like the only girl that's amazing that, and, you that, really and you chose to do and, that as well and I and I I love it. And I really, I get up every morning and I, I love dressing modestly. I love making it cool and fashionable and fun and relatable. I love that some people don't even know that I'm a Jewish religious woman. I mean, it, it, sometimes they can't, I mean, now they really can tell, but my Mazel collection really brought it out. But before that, you know, they're like, oh, she's so like, hip, like you're oh, fashionable. midi length skirt. Like, who are you? Like a hippie? Like, like what are, are you? You know, like cool. And it, I, that's all because of my mom. She, she, once I was wearing skirts, she's like, you are going to look cool for sure. Yeah. Like always. <laughs> so, um, but I, I really find that like, for me, what, how I dress, um, when you were talking about helping younger girls that are struggling, it's not the talk, it's the walk for me always. It's really not. And the fact that like, we're the four of us are walking around be dressed beautifully, looking cool and fabulous. And just like people are looking and admiring you and what you're doing and your passions. That's what they look at you and they're like, I, that, that's, that's amazing. Like I want to dress like that person. It doesn't have to be that like musser and that like pounding of like, you have to wear this. And if you're not wearing it up to here, da, 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 da. it's, it's, it's being that person. Right. And, and so it's so special. And I feel like, um, for me, especially, you know, men wear kippahs and everyone knows that they're Jewish. This is my Jewish uniform. Like, I love the fact that people know that I'm Jewish and it makes me like strive to be a better person every day. I know that I have to hold the door. I know that I have to be nice to that coworker, to be nice to that business person. And I have to, you're being represented. You're, 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 you have you're to be a, a, oh, yeah. Kiddush Hashem. And I told this to the Stern girls last week. I said, when you're going out into the workforce, when you're dealing with your professors, you, every, you are so much greater than yourself, especially in 2023. With the rise of anti-Semitism, everyone will look at every stupid little thing that you do. Yeah, so Literally, true. like you sit on the subway and there's an older person and everyone's like, oh, that Jewish girl doesn't sit, get up for that. You know, it's like how people say like, policemen are always eating donuts. No, it's just because you see them in their uniform and they happen to be eating a donut. So now all policemen eat donuts and that's the whole stigma. That's the vision. So <laughs> it, it's, it, that's how it is with Judaism. Point, yeah. And like, if you're wearing a kippah, if you are dressed modestly, you better be acting a certain yeah. way because you are. You have to live up to you what have you have to. Represent. And you're, because it's not just you and your community. You have to, you should want to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but honestly, at this yeah. point, it's like, it's kind of like a, it's, it got to a dangerous part. Like yeah. things are really happening in this in America that are dangerous, and you can't give anyone that fuel to say or or want to act upon their feelings of anti-Semitism mm -hmm. because they see you as a Jew acting a certain way. Yeah, and that's also overcoming a fear. You know, overcoming yeah. the fear of what, rejection or it, even sometimes actual danger in a world where anti-Semitism is pretty much everywhere. And yeah. that's Sharbi Tachin addresses that too. Is when you're holding Hashem's hand, you don't have to be afraid. To represent uh -huh. your people and and i think your husband elon just said this story how he knows somebody who has a little bit of road rage and he wears a kippah 
And, <laughs> you know, everyone, whatever, everyone has their thing. And he knows that when he's about to, like, you know, say something or honk or get a little crazy, he takes off his the keeper. <laughs> but that's what, yeah, you know, like, it, right. it, if you're going to do something, and, and, and it, it's true. And, like, as a woman, you want to maintain this elegance and this realness of what it means to be an, a Jewish woman. So by me personally, I'm just talking about myself, the way that I dress is what makes me bring that, the best part of I me feel out. Exactly yeah. I feel exactly Very the same. Very special and true. Yes. It's the truth. <laughs> it's that's the, it's the truth. It's not so good or bad. Inside and that's out. What, right. Yeah. It's not, yes. It's not the good and bad. And I think like people are really stuck on that. Like if I do this, it's good. If I don't do that, yeah. it's bad. Yeah. If I do this, it's just MS. There's truth. Right. And we are for sure in our, I, I believe that we're full, for sure in our truth. <laughs> like right. I, I try and be really truthful with myself and truthful with others. And I expect that back. And and so this is my and truth. People and people, sincerity. yeah, mm -hmm. and people are very, you know, people ask me, you know, Joyce, you'll meet with the head of a department store. You'll meet with these big people. Like, do you feel like they judge you because you're an Orthodox Jew? If I tell you, yeah. they love it. Mm -hmm. When I met with Dillard's, I remember asking him, I'm like, you know, can I have kosher food when I get there? And, you know, he answered me. Kosher food don't come around here too often. You know, like there is no like, like Arkansas yeah, or like, it was in Arkansas. Arkansas. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we would laugh. And like, you know, a, a head at Macy's once told me, she's like, you have the best hair. And I told her it was a wig and we spoke for an hour. Her mother always wore wigs. And I think that when you're yourself, whatever that means, yeah, whether you love is. animals it's and you're, it's, it's your truth. And, and, and I, people love it. Can I share something it. interesting with you? Actually, I've, yeah. I've actually never said this before, but it was an interesting experience I went through when I was struggling myself um, when I first got married, wearing a, wearing a wig and sneers and all that kind of thing. I went through my own journey, my inner yeah. thoughts of struggle. And I went to, uh, I, had, I was a singer at one point and I had voice lessons and I went to my voice teacher and she was trying to release something from my throat and she felt that I was wearing a wig. And she's like, you're wearing a wig? And I said, yeah, and it was actually a pretty wig, similar to this. And she said, oh my gosh, I, f I feel so bad for you. And, and I actually felt bad for myself. myself. Whoa. And like when I think of today, if I was sitting there, she probably wouldn't have even said, I feel so bad for you. She must have picked up on that your, your I wasn't feeling. happy with yeah. it. If I, if I had this, the pride Confidence. that I do today of wearing my wig, um, she would have been like, wow, that's amazing. Wh wh why do you do it? How does that mm. feel? I feel like she picked up so on the energy true. and that's, no one says that to me today. I feel so right. bad for you. If they did, I, I'd have something to share. No, I'm actually really proud to be doing this, but it's just interesting when you're actually feeling something, people pick up on that. Can you imagine like walking up to a queen and being like, I feel so bad that you're wearing a crown. Like, <laughs> right, I feel right. so bad for you. <laughs> I, I mean, that's like, I, I, I literally feel like f for me, like, when I, when I, when I wear a wig, I feel like everything that happened in the past is okay. In the sense that I feel like I've arrived to a place within myself that I can cover something that I feel is beautiful because I love my hair <laughs> and, and still feel so fantastic and so connected to Hashem. And, and the truth is I used to use my beauty when I wasn't from to connect to people because I felt so alone. And so I used my beauty as a place where I was like, I'm not alone. If I'm beautiful, then people will want to be with me and people will want to hang out with me. And then I never have to address this piece of myself that, that, that doesn't want to be alone. And today as an adult, I'm okay with me in a room. Like I'm okay with myself. First of all, I feel Hashem's presence, but when I wear a wig, I'm, I'm like, I really feel like I'm putting on a crown and I know it sounds so, it can sound very cheesy, you know? No, I understand I, that. I, I really feel like a queen and I, and I feel special. And It's I, a reminder that Hashem is with you. It, mm -hmm. Completely. <laughs> and, you know, I always say when people tell me like, oh, about certain mitzvahs or what was your first mitzvah? And, and, and I say, even to, even to explain it to you, I, I won't it's a love story. It's, it's literally a love story. I can't tell you what it's like to keep Shabbos. I can't tell you what it's like to light candles. I cannot tell you what it's like to wear a wig. Try. You know Try. what's so interesting is this morning, we, we, I get to watch sunrise and sunset every day. Oh. And, I, and whenever I take a picture of the sunrise, the picture just doesn't do yeah. it justice. Yes. Like you have to just, yes. you, you, have to, you have to it's be so there. Yes. You have to do it. You can't describe mm -hmm. the sunrise. You just no. simply can't. Until you do it, until you see it. So true. You know, I used to feel very vulnerable 
to like I would I, I would I was always scared when I would go places as a young girl and I remember as a teenager I would go from therapist to therapist like I'm scared when I'm at the gas station and they would be like so you oh, really did have a fear. tell me what happened at the gas station you know this is what it yeah. would be like um, and I started to cover my hair and I remember the first day I covered my hair and I went to the gas station and I wasn't scared and I was like what is this feeling what changed like what is it that changed and I think that I was putting out so much energy physically to try to feel safety or feel something. And when I was able to conceal, you know, my, myself and allow the vulnerability to exist within me and me deal with it, not everybody have to take part of how I was feeling or being part of my healing journey that I could manifest it within myself and deal with it and have all these things come up. I was not scared. And, and, and there's no way to explain it because the mitzvah held so much power for me. Um, but again, each power is so individual. It's a love story. And everybody's love story is completely different. And, um, and, 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 and there's nothing like doing it. There's nothing like, like getting in there and just... Also connecting, it connects you to every thousand, all the thousands of women before you that did it. Like That's just right. lighting Shabbos candles, mm -hmm. making kala. It's like such a crazy feeling to be in Manhattan on the Upper East Side in 2000, almost 2024, making challah, the same thing that, that my great grandmother was doing in Poland, that their great grandmothers were doing wherever. It just like back, 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 back. It's crazy. But why is that so powerful? Is because you're connected. Yes. You're literally Because you're always, you're connected. And, and it's, it's a way to just. I think it was in a Hayom Yom. I'm not sure, or maybe it was in, I don't know, it was somewhere in Hasidus. When you are aware, when you know that you are that this is the truth, that you're connected to all those people before you, it makes it that much more powerful. So when oh, yeah. you do it and you think about the fact that you're connected to all the women before you that were doing it, you, you're connected to an, in an even more powerful way. I it's a responsibility that, and it's a... I said that like about meeting you. I felt like I met somebody who, who was here like so many times before and was connected to everything before. And I felt like meeting her on the journey was, soul was like sure. so yeah. special but also she was so grounding in that way you know I, it's you, really you said something earlier that is so big that about vulnerability because we see vulnerability as us being able to share ourselves with others but you said vulnerable with myself yeah I never heard it said that way yeah. like vulnerable with myself and then I could connect to others mm -hmm. and that's that's like a prerequisite Almost. Yeah, I feel like I, I also grew up in such an open house and people were like, try this therapist, go to this sound healer, go release your this and go. They do were doing that all the way in back LA, then. In LA, <laughs> in LA, they have a, they have a different Shaman thing, shamans and, and this and yogas and this, that. And I, and I was, and I was so authentic with my will to do and try everything. And I did, I walked with snakes, I did crazy stuff. Literal crazy you stuff. Walked with snakes? Yes, I walked with snakes nine months <laughs> pregnant. I was mm -hmm. crazy. I sat and, you know, made all these noises and did all these things that people told me I would feel better and I didn't. And, um, you know, and like when you can kick and scream inside of yourself and deal with yourself and then, and then you require the help of others, it's okay, but you have to start in that first place. Right, mm -hmm. uh, right, right. You know, right. you, you got to start there first. You have to know yourself also. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did we... So, I would, I mean, I would love to, I, this, it, we were going to ask about, you know, the aha moment, that whole, um, yeah, we're gonna ask like when there's like a light bulb moment yeah. when you discover something that changes the way that you see the world, changes your perception of the world. And um, I kind of got that vibe when you shared, you know, with the gas station. It's kind of like went to the gas station. Then I was so afraid. I went to the gas station after. It was like a whole different. Yeah, that was an aha moment for you. I had a big one. Do you one. have one? Yeah. So I was at the University of Michigan my freshman year and I was actually going to go to Israel to seminary for a year mm -hmm. um, after high school. I was, I knew, I always had this pull to become more religious, always. I was always loved my teachers that were from, and I loved their family. I loved watching their families, and I, I just like always was into it. And I knew that if I went to seminary, I would become super from. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for it. I don't know if my family's ready for it. Like, I don't know how this is going to be. Are you the youngest, the oldest? I'm the middle the of middle. three girls. That's right. My younger sister is um, living in Israel, and she, and I pushed her to go to seminary after I didn't, and she became from, and her husband's an amazing rabbi and everything. My older sister also actually also became a little bit more religious. So my whole family became more, more religious, um, like in their own ways. But um, I, 
was, <laughs> I kind of like wanted to ignore it because I was 18. So I was like, I didn't know what I really, I, I just was like, I don't know, what do I, what do I do? Do I become religious, I go to Israel? I got into the University of Michigan. I'm like, I'm just gonna go, ignore it, you know? I get to the University of Michigan, obviously the first thing I do is go to Chabad. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, it just was, yeah. And I, it, for, for oh, you maybe there. my personality, I think that when I'm taken out of my comfort zone and put into somewhere totally different, I really shine. I really like became like found who I was. And that's not typical for like some kids that go to college. Usually they kind of like bl want to blend in or whatever. And I took that opportunity and I'm like, I love, I love Chabad. I love learning. I love Judaism. I love going to Shabbat dinner. And I would take all my friends to Shabbat dinner. And I actually, um, started learning and I, I use my phone for shop. Like I was not Shomer Shabbos before I did. We didn't drive, but I used my phone and I watched TV and everything and turned on the lights. The, when I got to Michigan, I started, I turned off my phone and I was in a sorority. It was like the craziest world. I'm like, what is this life? This is insane. Like sorority craziness and going to parties every night. And I decided to turn off my phone and it was, it was so hard because nobody was religious and I would make all my friends come with me for Shabbat dinner and then meet me somewhere Saturday and figure it out. And then I was on the bus. This is crazy. It's such an aha moment. I always say it's like one of those Oprah. It's an Oprah moment. You know, yeah, when she yeah. says those aha moments. That's where the thorn oh, comes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Literally, and I tell this to everyone. I'm like, I never drove on Shabbos, at least that I could remember from growing up. And um, I get set up with this guy for the date party for the Kappa Alpha Theta, the, the sorority that I was in. And, and it was on Friday night. And the Rebbitson, we were already obviously like very close. She would tell me things like it is, wasn't hiding. She's like, are you crazy? Like, don't go down Shabbos. Like, you can't go. Like, you know better than that. And I went and I was on the bus sitting next to him. And I remember the only, I felt so guilty. And the only thing I could talk about was I was just in Israel. Like, I'm taking Hebrew. I'm kosher. I'm this, I'm that. And he's just like, <laughs> and he happens to also been from the Upper East Side, but didn't go to a Jewish school. And had never been to Israel, didn't know what kosher meant. Like, and I was sitting there and I'm like, what am I doing here? I literally had that moment. I was on the bus on Chavez, went to, was going to this party. And I'm like, what is happening? I, I was like, yeah. my parents had just visited me for parents weekend. And they're like, she's never coming home. Like, this is great. Like she loves it. Blah, blah, blah. I go home. It was December. I go home for winter break. And I sat down with my parents. I'm like, I'm transferring back to New York. And they're like, what? They're like, what do you mean? Like, you love, you were dying to go to Michigan. Like, you loved it. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I don't belong there. Like, I need to come back. Like, yeah, it really like wasn't quote, for me. You find your purpose on the path you take to avoid it. It's wow. like, you are headed it, and it no, whether you like it or yeah, not. It, it's it's going to come to you. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And, so, I, and you, there was no looking back. No, back. I transferred back. And I, I, I mean, I finished the year. And then, and I, I still became, and I ran the Chabad. I was the head of Chabad student government. I went to alternative. <laughs> of course. I went, I went to alternative spring break to Brazil. with, And I got all my friends to come. And it was so fun. And I did have this feeling of like, I did go back to New York. And I transferred to NYU. And I wasn't the leader in that community. And I wasn't, I didn't have that, that feeling because I was back where like all my high school friends and everyone I know, and it wasn't as big of a role for me. And I kind of went home on Shabbos, but I then went to Jerusalem and went to learn. And I feel like that's also important because you don't have to follow the typical trajectory of like, I have to go to seminary now and I have to do this. Like I went to Hebrew U my junior year and I started learning there and I got like set up with Chavrut and I went to seminary and I went to seminary for the summers after that. And I just like did my own thing and I didn't have to follow even now. Like if I had three weeks, I'd be like, I'm going to, I'm going to learn in Israel, you know, like just like, cause I love learning. And, and I really realized that after, after high school, it, it came up after when it wasn't like forced on me and I really wanted to learn. Um, but yeah, it was, it was such a pivotal year for me and I needed to leave my world to like really yeah it's like Abraham. Like, that's amazing yeah Abraham, left wow. left yes sometimes leave yeah. to find yourself um if you had I know this is a big question but if you had a message that or if you had a billboard and you could put one message on the billboard and anyone Ooh, who passes could read it and see it <laughs> um let's start with Joyce what what would it say I think it would be a two-sided billboard. Okay. Ah. <laughs> there we go. The She's business like, woman and talking. And it lifts up and it opens yeah, and yeah. it has like red and pink. Well, not okay, red, but it has like pink and, and blue. And um, On one side, it would say, it's not about you. Ah. And on the opposite side, it would say, the world was created for you. 
Cool. Wow. Yeah. That's I think right. both things the have to be at dust. play. It's, it's a quote yeah. from. Yeah. I think it was actually um, the Balsham. something I heard from maybe Shimon Jacobs. Yeah. 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 We should walk yes. around with two pockets. Yeah. yeah. And each pocket. But, we should but, have a, yeah. but in, in, in one sense, we should see ourselves in the truth where <laughs> Hashem is so big and we are, like my dad used to always say this. Like God is big and we're very little. And like I always go up in a plane and I remember my dad saying that because when you look down, you see everything is so where it is, you know. Um, and then on the other hand, I think that when we wake up, when we daven and we have an awareness of who we are, we have to live in this world like it was created for us. And we have to see ourselves. And maximize. And yeah, yeah, maximize. We have to see ourselves as the maximum version of ourselves. And I think that... Um, and I think sometimes, yeah, we lie to ourselves and we see ourselves smaller, limited, stuck. That's such know? a great one. It's, it's also, yeah, there's right. such a fine line between like low self-esteem and humility. And I think yes, you were mentioning that, that, high school also, like yes. in high schools where the messages sometimes can get misconstrued and both are saying, I am nothing. Someone with low self-esteem might feel like I'm not enough, right? I'm not enough because of, I'm in a scarcity mindset. Nobody will like me enough. Right. Someone with humility says, I'm not enough too. They're saying the same thing. Right. But they're saying I'm not enough only in relation to, to Hashem. I think it's good for the opposite too. If someone doesn't have enough bittle, like they think that they're amazing, uh -huh. they need to recognize, right. guess what? It's mm -hmm. Hashem that's running mm -hmm. the world. Um, nothing, you know? And then, to, but to also, that, that'll bring the right balance of humility, recognizing their gifts, but also recognizing it's right. not and Those mine, people will be driving good. on the side where you see, where you see, <laughs> yeah. I am nothing. Yeah. It's not about you. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The right people will see yeah. the right sign. Yeah. Yeah, the sign and like knowing when you're wrong and when you yeah. have to apologize. And you know, that it yeah. goes, it goes, it's a big. But to go back to connection too, and how that plays in, it's like, if we don't properly balance those two ideas, we actually affect the world. When a mother is mothering and she's broken and she doesn't have a sense of self and she's like they say, like a carpet, you know, then 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 she's affecting her children. Like I'm saying not in a way of responsibility of like, oh, now I, I, I listen to this podcast and I, I don't have a good sense of you no, know, but our life is about like a, getting finding the balance and understanding that we are connected with other people and there's a responsibility to that and I always say when I speak like I'm connected to every single person in this room and it's not the good or bad in the choices that you make it's how you see Hashem in it and how you can see your how can you see yourself with value in the situation and the way you feel is how I'm going to feel I'm going to feel connected like I told you in COVID I felt the davening we are so connected and I see that even like when me and Rachie sit in a room somewhere, people are like, wow, I just felt it. Or, you know, wow, you guys feel so something. Um, but it's because we actually have a responsibility to you. I have a responsibility to myself, to myself within this friendship, to myself within the world. And we're all so connected. And so we have to be. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I think, so for my billboard, I would do, what you're saying, I'm thinking of my favorite, I'm thinking of my favorite quote, I don't know, right, right. I'm thinking of my favorite quote, but I'm also thinking of like the saying that I say all the time. My favorite quote has to do with exactly what you just said, that it's the Maya Angelou quote that uh, people will forget what you did. People will forget what you say, but they will never forget how they, how you made them feel. Yeah. And it's, it can translate, you know, it could, it could be channeled into this podcast. Like it, it doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one, face to face interaction. It's just the way that I'm sure everyone listening to this right now is going to listen to what Joyce was saying now and feel so changed and moved and transformed. And you're going to get so many messages and it's how you make people feel. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, yeah. I, you can't That's even explain it. That's more powerful than anything. Yeah. It's, it's more powerful than anything. And I see how people watch Joyce when they, when she speaks and they're everything else, they could be so vulnerable in that moment and everyone else is not there. They're just staring at Joyce and they're, she's talking to me. She's talking directly to me. And it's so amazing to watch that. Mm -hmm. And it's such a special quality. And so I think that to me is my favorite quote. It's like, it's uh, always been my favorite quote. And I hope to emulate that when I work with people and just hopefully, and I do definitely feel like I have to work on certain character traits of myself to make them feel a certain way, but I hope to do that. And um, I also think that for my billboard, I would do 
because I say it all the time, but everything happens for a reason or hakomi nashamayim, you know, interchangeable. Um, I think that reminding yourself that and saying it, like when you're turning the corner and someone bumps into you and coffee flies all over you, when you're, when, you know, it, <laughs> Monday, I, you have to just like, if Monday. you just say it like, okay, everything happens for a reason. Like you smile and you're like, okay. You know, like it just, it's so hard, but you have to just keep saying it over and over again. And eventually as the days and the years go by, you look back and you see, you like connect all the dots of like why you had to make that left turn to run into that person who actually introduced you to that person who, you know, but if you hadn't spilled your, sh the coffee on your shirt, you wouldn't yeah. have gone to change. And then you yeah. wouldn't have, and you, it's like that movie sliding doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, yeah. And like her, it shows her life if she missed the train and if her life, if she made the yeah. train and it's, that's our every minute of every day we're doing that. And it's so crazy. And like, to me, it's to when you remind yourself that, during those hard moments when things happen, whether that be like the smallest mundane to the biggest whatever, eventually in hindsight, you will understand why that happened. Yeah. And it's so, and it, it gives you peace when you're like, okay, I just have to like wait it out and time will tell, but I know that this happened for a reason yeah, and it will beautiful. be clear. So. Sorry, I just want to add one more billboard because I can't, I can't, I can't have So two. now we have a billboard franchise. Now we do billboards. Um, but uh, my sister gave me a watch and uh, oh, she yeah. was very excited about it. And, 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 I, and I love it. And on the back of the watch, it, said, it, it basically the watch is called It's a Matter of Time. Mm -hmm. And I think that why that quote moves me so much is because if we talk about life not in good and bad, but in just truth. We all arrive to the truth. <laughs> One day we're going to meet the truth. And, and it's what we would have done with our time. And so that's why when we talk about business and simplifying things and launching things, this is how we're using time because we're in the action state. We're using the time. Mm -hmm. But also when things are difficult, you know, um, let's say you have a challenge in your marriage it's not always going to be like that. Like, no, no, really, it's not always going to be like, if you struggle with debilitating anxiety, it will stop. The truth happens. And to, I think to have that wisdom, to pass down that wisdom to people around you is that time is something that you can either take harness and move with it and, and, and use it. Or time is something that you can actually help to move you through something and to not magnify it but to try and just use the time to let it go. And our new, we are coming, like we're working on new watches and oh, on the back of yeah. every single watch, it says, trust the timing of your life. life. I said oh that to gosh. you when I met you. Yeah. We did an episode. Did Remember I said, when I met you, I said, And trust. I said, I just came up with yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, met her and I said, <laughs> trust the timing of it. your life. And she said, I just put that on the watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say though, that on the Baal Shem Tov's um, birthday, which was just now, the Hayom Yom, um, it said in there it was just a different way of saying it, but I really liked it. Hi Elul. Hi yeah. Elul. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's his it said um, the Baal Shem Tov had said, "Whatever path you choose, that is what that was min Hashemayim." Yes. So sometimes people can wow. have regrets yes. and wow. be like, they blame themselves. They blame themselves. Yeah. I, I should have chosen something else. Maybe that's what Hashem yeah. wanted. I looked at it. Okay, whatever you choose. Not mm -hmm. that I don't have free will. I have the choice. Mm -hmm. But what I choose is what Hashem wants, and I'm meant to be there. So true. Yeah. I have a very simple story with that. I was in a supermarket. I was 18 years old. And the lady told me, paper or plastic? I said, paper. And then she goes, okay. And then I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, plastic. Okay. So she starts moving the groceries over and say, sorry, can I have paper? And she looked at me <laughs> and she said, whether you choose paper or plastic, your groceries are getting home. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really, so and it's, it's really true. Right. When yeah. we have a mission, we're here, you know, in the time that we're here, and Hashem wants us to accomplish it. And whether you're in paper or you're in plastic, mm -hmm. you make the right, you make the left, you're gonna, you're gonna get there, yeah. you know? Amen. 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 Wow. <laughs> Thank you so, so great. much. This Thank was really you. so insightful and beautiful. And, so fun. And energizing and I so just, inspiring. And I love your vibe. You guys have such a calming, intelligent like just you know exactly what to say when to say it it's really such a gift you guys should continue it was a process for doing this <laughs> we're learning on, on as we go it's amazing growing. it's really thank incredible you. thank you thank, thank you. you so, so much cool. and this is such a gift to real to have you guys here today and your energy and what you've shared is so <laughs> inspirational we can't wait to share this